Hello everybody and welcome. In this tutorial we will make a piece of music in the style of Mozart using Cubase 7 and Chord Track. Let's get started. First I'm gonna create an empty project and I'm gonna create a folder called example and I will add a chord track and a marker track. I always create marker tracks to have shortcuts like this one. Now let's configure, configure the chord track. I'm gonna mute it. I don't like it to to show scales. And here in the voicings, I guess piano is okay because our project will be for piano. And here in options, I'm gonna uncheck this, this one, this one. I only need triads and four notes chords. So uh, also I'm gonna uncheck the automatic voicings and the automatic scales because I'm gonna do that by myself. And well, we need to add some instruments here. The sorry, the first instrument will be a piano, actually, and this will be the piano one. This piano is free, you can download it from the website of Piano One and it has a great great sound so I like it very much and the other one will be the Cthulhu. Cthulhu is an arpeggiator. This is like any other arpeggiator but it has some options that you can control the octave you can control the notes and control the octave and that will be very useful to us we will base our project on a famous sonata from Mozart that is the sonata number 15 and well actually we will only use one little part that is this one that starts here and ends here but uh, first we need to analyze the chords that Mozart uses in this part uh, here I'm gonna put a bar because there is a change of chord here and here there is another change of chord here there's another one and here and here and here so what we have here is this is the chord of G major and here we have a C major an F uh, here we have a diminished a B diminished and here we have an E minor and then we have an A minor minor sorry and right here we have a D major and this is a G major too okay so I'm gonna come back to my Cubase and in the chord track I'm gonna create some tracks here here's one two three four five six seven eight chords these eight chords I'm gonna copy it and paste it here so first chord we have was a G so let's use a G here and then there is a C here an F next we have a B diminished and next it's an E minor, this is an A minor, 
and finally this code was a D and this was a G now that we have our chords here we can just select them and drag it to this track and Cubase will automatically create the MIDI chords for us I'm gonna put this up this channel here and this will be the input of our our arpeggiator so there's no need to have any connected here and for the piano the input mu must be the output of the arpeggiator so if we press play we can hear what happens now well that sound is that way because we haven't already configured our arpeggiator we need to remove these default values and put exactly the notes that we want to sound these notes we will take the, from this pattern of the original piece so our piece has we need to decompose this note to know how the arpeggiator is created for example this note is a third sorry this note is a third and this note here is a fifth and this one is a root and again a third this one is a fifth the same as this one this is a fifth this is a third this is sorry this is a root and well here on this chord this is the root this is a third a fifth a root again this is a third the same as this one this is a fifth and this is a third but as a matter of fact we can't put these numbers on the arpeggiator we need to translate this into a numeric language that the arpeggiator can interpret for example this third actually will be a one this fifth will be a two the root will be a three this fifth will be a two this third will be a one sorry, it will be a 1, this fifth will be a 2, this third will be a 1, and this root will be a 5, sorry, a 3, sorry, a 3, because the RPGA2 doesn't care about harmony, it only takes the notes in the order that they are played, so if this is the first note, it's going to be the 1, the second note will be the two and so on and we have to be um, very careful that this G is in the first inversion and well this C we can analyze that the root will be the one the third will be a two the fifth will be a three it's quite straightforward the root will be a one the third will be a two the fifth will be a three, sorry. The third would be a two, and this third would be a two two. So this is the pattern that we need to put inside our arpeggiator. So let's do it now. We have two, one, two, three. One, two, one, three, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, two. Let's play it. Sorry, let's play it.
Well, it's okay, but there's something we need to do. That is, this tab is actually the one that we can use to move, transpose these notes to different octaves. So we need to analyze where to put these notes. First of all, we need some trace some anchors here. For example, this line is the C5, and here this line here is our C4. This line here is also our C4. Be careful that this is a treble clef and not a bass clef like here. So we have C5, C4 and this one is our C3 or our central, th this is the central C. So our arpeggiator will put all our notes on based on the C3 because that's the central C. We need now to come back to Cthulhu and say that, for example, this node is up two octaves. These three are okay, but this fourth might be one octave up. And again, we have three here that goes. Two, this two goes two octaves up and this one goes one octave up the same with this one octave up then we have three here that need no no transposition and this one needs one octave of transposition and this three where no sorry this is one, two, three, one. Sorry, this one's here. This is these three notes are these three spaces, and this note with this three comes one octave up. So let's look at it. I'm gonna record that to see. It. Well, there is one issue here is that I forgot to state the time. And originally this piece is in Allegro. So I need to change my time and put something more Allegro, which is one let's say one hundred and fifty and my arpeggiator will be in one octave the note. Maybe the complete gate will be easy for us for now. And well, let's see how it record that. So let's analyze this, our input, our input. So I see, for example, that this note uh, is not in the position that we want because there's no need to to see that. Well, this, these notes are not exactly happening, and I'm afraid it's because I forgot to tell. Two ways that this is in the first inversion. This is in the root, this is in the first inversion, this is in the root, this is in the first inversion, this is in root, this is on first inversion. Why do I know why do I know that? It's because this chord starts with the third, not with the root. So this is a first inversion of the G. And this C starts with the root, so it's in the root and this F starts here with a third so it's in the first inversion and this B diminished is in root so Mozart alternates this 
progression with first inversion, then root, then first inversion, then root, then first inversion, then root, and so on. So, and we need to tell Cubase that we need this channel, this track, to follow the chord track. And as a matter of fact, we we don't put chords but voicings but because if we choose voicings then QBs will uh, take into account the position if this is a root, if this is a first inversion and so on so we're gonna delete this and record again to see how it how it's now Okay, let's look. Sorry, let's take a look at this. And um, yeah, we have it. We have these lines, these straight lines in classical music are very, very meaningful to create uh, a great shape and a great melody. So I guess that we have done, we have copied this um, style of Mozart in the same way that this in this score now that we have a progression in the style of Mozart we can make some variations with it for example I would like to copy this and duplicate it so in this second part I want to do some variations some substitutions with the chords but as a matter of fact this score is actually in C and we are just taking a part where it was in G that doesn't mean that the score starts in G so we have to create some space sorry we have to create some some space here to put an introduction on on the key of C for example I'm gonna take four chords, copy it, and I want to paste it here. So now I have four bars that I can use to create an introduction and I have to start of course in the chord of C. So what about a C, then an F, and then a C, and then a C7. This progression here the CFC is uh, called well it's very common in classical music and this, this is a dominant this is sorry this is a tonic a subdominant a tonic or one for one so we can record that to see to hear how it works Okay, so we have an introduction here and we also need to paste a, f a final here, an ending. So I'm going to place here another marker and here now, sorry, here I'm going to just create a C, an F. G and C C major what about C, a G7 so this is also a very common progression on classical music this would be uh, the tonic the subdominant the dominant and finishing with the tonic now that we have this ending I would like to duplicate it to create a, a half cadence a half cadence here and a perfect cadence here this is actually is a perfect cadence but in order to make this a half cadence I just need to change this last chord so I'm gonna use chord assistant and well there are many options here 
I will I know that the only thing I need is that I I have to change this tonic for a submediant that would be like that would be an A minor A minor but I can feel to this just removing these scales that doesn't are that aren't uh, related with my project um, remove these substitutes and here this is my uh, number six my submediant so I'm gonna use this but as a matter of fact I don't want it in seven I wanna leave it as that so if you hear this if we hear this we know that this would sound like it's not ending and we need another a repetition of this but with, with a proper ending here. Let's hear that. So now we have here a half cadence and then a perfect cadence here. So we are done with this with our with our ending. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing that Cubase make this a, f a second inversion but I want it as a first inversion I'm just checking everything is okay so uh, this must be a first inversion too and well uh, there are other substitutions that I would like to make for example um, here from here to here is what we took from the original piece of Mozart so if I play this for example this G uh, is followed by another G so this is not gonna sound very good so we need to substitute this chord again I'm gonna use the chord sorry the chord assistant, assistant and in this case I would like to introduce a diatonic substitution so for diatonic substitutions it's easier to rely on common notes and here I can filter it with for example I'm gonna get rid of one common note I need something that sounds a little bit closer so three common notes would be nice but two common notes are still okay so what about um I don't, I don't see here the beat diminished which is very common to see as a substitution of a dominant dominant could be substituted by the leading so um, there should be a bit diminished here um, come on here this is a bit diminished I see that we have two common notes so I'm replacing this with a be diminished and let's hear that now so as you can hear there is a great progression from G to B diminished and I would also like would like to remove this F and substitute that with something um, I mean with another diatonic substitution in this case um, let's say if, if this is a subdominant I can replace it with a supertonic that would be um, D minor so where is my D minor? I don't see D minor maybe well, get rid about this Mm -hmm. um. well okay I don't see the D minor I'm gonna put it by myself because I know that if this was uh, the F in this scale is a subdominant I can replace it by a dominant 
sorry by a supertonic and to create to create a dominant uh, sorry a diatonic substitution so let's hear that So I guess that this is all. Uh, well, actually, I can create um, other substitution. For example, this E. I can create. It, I can make it major, which is a chromatic substitution, or in other words, is borrow from the minor scale. This A. I can make it major, which is exactly. Another example of uh, chromatic substitution, and well, that's all the substitutions I want to do to this piece. So for the final part, I would like to create a different feeling by uh, creating a different arpe arpeggio here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open Cthulhu, and I'm gonna copy this bank and I'm gonna paste it on bank B same with the octaves I'm gonna copy this information of the octaves I'm gonna paste it so now on bank B what I would like to do is just remove one of two co from two codes from two notes sorry so this will uh, be more slow and will give the feeling that something is ending and uh, so let's hear that, let's record that but I would like uh, just to finish with the chord so this chord here I'm gonna make it a just a little bit larger uh, in order to have another note, just one note more so let's record that again so that's fine and so what if I like to add a different texture at the end of this piece let's just add a track here add a MIDI track and this track I'm gonna call it tenor and we're, it's connected to the piano one so it's okay so the only thing I need I want is I'm gonna drag this chord and I'm get, I'm gonna get rid of alto and soprano and I'm gonna take this tenor and I just need this a little note and half the measure so that I compare with this I would be adding just um, a polyphonic uh, note here and I'm gonna tell Cubase to follow the, color tr the chord track but only a single voice this will be the tenor so if I duplicate this this note is gonna follow the tenor of these chords and we can hear that from here So uh, finally, we have made, we have created um, uh, an, a different texture at this at the end. I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna copy this and paste it here so that I can see if there is 
any collision there are no collisions here all these nodes that are in gray are from the second track from the other track and they do not collide with the original ones here and as a matter of fact I would like to take a look to the whole piece and see if there are any note that I would like to change for, for example I see that these notes are very high so I can just select them sorry just select them and move down one octave now maybe now um, I'm gonna leave that that way so my score is okay now and finally I would like to create a score from this track I'm gonna select all the track and create open selection what I have here is a uh, score but I need to do some arrangements. I will start to choosing a preset of piano because this is for piano but there are m many things that I would like to change for example this clef should be a treble because in our original track we have a treble here and also I would like to um, split the hands not on a C3 but on a C4 on a C4 because here we have the C4 is the is the limit where the hands are split right so but well maybe it's not C4 but C sharp 4 so I have this here have three, this three here, maybe more, I don't know, I'm gonna leave that that way. I'm gonna uh, ask to include chords, so these chords are here that can be uh, read by someone else and I'm gonna tell this to update well it's not updating because this come on uh, okay wanna choose C sharp four and well that's fair enough we have here we can at this at the end I, I would like to well change this to travel tab because at the end there is a tenor sounding here well I'm gonna leave this clap and well I c we can print our score file print we have to make sure that these do not rely on system funds that so I'm gonna uncheck this I'm gonna print it and what I have here is my score on PDF And finally, I can export it to an XML format. Finally, there are some things that I can annotate here on my score. For example, that. Um, 
there are some substitutions here for example this D uh, doesn't belong to the scale of major C so I can kind of insert some text here for example mm -hmm. for example mm -hmm. text I can just write here that this is uh, this is a substitution actually this is a chromatic Neapolitan 6 and for example this one here this B diminished is a diatonic Ton diatonic substitute of G sorry G and this D minor is a diatonic substitution of F and so on actually I, I have to put the time here there is a special symbol for time but I can see it mm -hmm. yeah this one this is the time I need to uh, show that this is an allegro or a 150 BPMs. I also can put um, some text here. Put a title here. Um, write like Mozart's final assignment. And well, maybe I can choose font here well I forgot I forgot where is the font but I'm gonna put this here and finally well some other notations useful notations is that here this progression here well this is actually a, a circle of fifths from A from E to A to D to G. So we can call it also progression inside progression. Sorry. Progression inside progression or circle of fifths or circle of fifths. And what else? Well, finally, I have here a perfect authentic cadence. So I want to say that here. Perfect authentic cadence. And this is a. Uh, well, this was a substitution of this C to create the, per the half cadence. So this one goes here. And. this is a health cadence so that's all and I hope you enjoyed this and found this useful and stay tuned for future tutorials bye bye